when I first started marketing door to door here, pest control, let's talk pest control here in the Utah market. Mm-hmm. They gave us lots of different things, scripts and rebuttals and all kinds of things, right? But what I really quickly realized is that there's 5,000 other guys out there knocking the door saying the same thing, right? And so what I realized was is in this market, people get knocked a lot. They get knocked a lot and they get frustrated. What I've developed is what I called, I originally called it my quick pitch. What I've been relying on with this company that I'm local. Hey, I'm a local guy. I'm right here in your backyard. I'm not one of these big companies that comes out here with 5,000 people knocking your doors, but we're in the neighborhood. And then I go to. That is Greg Voisin. He is the founder of Smart Value Pest Control. And he is sharing his insights on the number one tool that helped him start up his business just two years ago. And that's grassroots door to door marketing and sales and how he does it and how, what works and what doesn't. Now, I'm your host, Yule Smith. This is the CloseTheDeal.com podcast. Now, let's begin the show. Greg, I want to welcome you to the CloseTheDeal.com podcast. I know you are in Lehigh, Utah. Where do you take a customer? Let's say you got somebody big that you want to land. Where would you take them to dinner or lunch to close the deal? Honestly, the, one of my favorite places, I, I did a service mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in my 20s. And I went to Brazil, and there's a restaurant here called Tucanos, uh-huh. and it's in a Brazilian barbecue-style restaurant where they cook the meat right off the skewer. Uh bring it out to your table and that is one of my favorite places that's where i would bring people is that you're not too far from salt lake is that about where it is or is it yeah this is about 20 minutes away yeah right there in salt lake all right i love it now this is one of my favorite questions what or who are you grateful for who helped you get you where to your where you are today talking to you you my past the first thing that pops in my mind, which I didn't think I would say this, but it's my father. My father is uh, my father very well and passed away almost 11 years now, but I'm super grateful for him, man. The guy had immense amount of tenacity, energy, motivation, just all kinds of things. Very, he had an incredible amount of patience. My father used to say, he used to say, look, I used to ask my dad, like, why do you like being an oysterman? Like, why do you like oysters? Why do you like what you do? And he said, I love the challenge. And I learned that from my father. I learned to enjoy the challenge of business through him. And I just resolving the problems, finding solutions, things like that. I'm also grateful for the opportunity to progress, that my mistakes don't have to define me. And I believe that it really boils down to a spiritual thing. The Lord developed something for us that we could progress. We make mistakes, but we get back and go. And that's what this whole existence is about, is figuring it out, working through problems and like that. So anyway, that's what I'm grateful for. I love that. Of course, your dad, he was a huge impact on my life and the life of, gosh, thousands of people, literally profound impact and i could understand that for sure all right speaking of problems you moved to utah and you identified a problem coming from south louisiana nonetheless <laughs> the home of louisiana you end up in utah and but you identified a problem in your market what was the problem and what is the solution that you've come up with yeah that's a great question i appreciate that i worked in this market for a couple of years and what I always found was, as I was out talking to customers, clients, things like that, I realized that a lot of what a pest control company provides is... And that's the you work know, you were doing. You were yeah, it was, it was actually marketing pest control at that time, the service itself. And uh, I just realized that, man, a lot of what, a lot of what I'm working on is... I'm just building a, I'm building value to them 
but it's just, it's fluff. It's not really, I'm not really building value. I'm just, I'm trying to build value that works, not with what our company and my, what I realized was is, man, you can actually just be super honest and straightforward, tell the customer what they really, versus we do five, these 5,000 things, right? And boil it down to something very simple, which is what pest control is, right? Is to create that perimeter and create that safety for their home, but do it in a way that cuts a lot of the fluff out and it's super straight, right? So it's a, there's a lot of companies out there that are presenting the Porsche of pest control or the super fancy version of pest control. And I'm not trying to say that we don't provide a great service and that we look out for all the needs. But we don't market ourselves as the Ferrari of pest control. Because who, in my opinion, really wants a Ferrari when it comes to pest control? It's like people just want their bugs gone, right? And so I guess for me, I wanted to be a Ford F-150 instead of a Ferrari. And the Ford F-150 seems like it could get rid of my bugs a lot easier and better and more effective with a lot more value than a Ferrari can, quite frankly. And so that's what I did is I created a product that gives you everything that company offers at a, a better price. That's what it's about. So it's about value. So when did you start your business? So I started my business last summer. Last summer was my first. I quit my job. And I had a job at the time and I, I went out and I, I just started sort of selling door to door. So I had led teams of or salesmen. It generated lots of revenue and understood the market. Understood a lot of what was going out there just by talking to people in the market, understanding all the price points, everything. And then, so just went out and started selling, literally. And that's, that's how it all started. Started knocking door to door, equipped my truck, went and did it. So grant, so grassroots marketing, that's how you're getting, is that the primary way you're getting everything out there to get going? Primary, yeah. Primary way is me door to door. I've done a lot of door to door after my service mission in Brazil. I did during college, my college years at University of Utah, I did some summers where I did door to door sales in Houston, actually, for some pest control company. So I had, develop this in door to door you have to have this resilience confidence tenacity just you just and also the service mission because we went door to door as missionaries and it just developed a confidence and an ability to not um, internalize every door or every emotion that came at you frustration you just learn how to talk to people and right. so you know, take them for right where they are. What is it? Okay, so I got to dig on the door-to-door -door thing a lot because a lot of people don't want to do that. But it's yeah. effective. What works? What? Uh, and, and just like your approach to pest control, I have a feeling the approach you use with door-to-door -door is pretty direct and simple too. What works for people? So people who are listening to this say, okay, I could do that, but I need to know how to do it. Yeah, it's funny because... When I first started marketing door to door here, pest control, let's talk pest control here in the Utah market. Mm -hmm. They gave us lots of different things, scripts and rebuttals and all kinds of things, right? But what I really quickly realized is that there's 5,000 other guys out there knocking the door saying the same thing, right? And so what I realized was is in this market, people get knocked a lot. They get knocked a lot and they get frustrated pretty. What I've developed is what I called, I originally called it my quick pitch. What I've been relying on with this company that I'm local. Hey, I'm a local guy. I'm right here in your backyard. I'm not one of these big companies that comes out here with 5,000 people knocking your doors, but we're in the neighborhood. And then I go to price immediately. I tell them the price because I want them to say, Oh, I do pest control. It's $79. And we do inside, outside, entire yard, do insects, rodents, and services. That's my pitch. 
It's not, not very complicated. Any more, it's, not any, it's not any fancier than that. The hard part is to maintain composure and confidence, right? It takes a certain amount of strength, emotional strength, to, as a 45-year-old man, to walk up to someone's door and knock it cold. I've never met these people. A lot of them are my neighbors. I see them at Costco. I see them in the neighborhood. And so I guess for me, it's just, I love that old song, Ain't Too Proud to Beg, and then there's no shame in this game. I, it's not that I, uh, it's not that I'm trying to be overbold. I just, I'm not afraid to go out and say, Hey, this is what I offer. And I'm super straightforward. Like I can do my pitch right out of the door. And the hard part about door to door is to gauge people. And over years and years of doing it, I've learned how to gauge. And you can read the nonverbals and understand this person wants to go. They're on a call. Like you start to read these things. So I know what pace to put myself at, but I know as soon as, as soon as I know if yes or no, I'm walking to the next door. But there's always moments when I know when to push, right? I know if someone asks me a question or someone hesitates a little bit, I develop the skill to know how to say, to read. All right. I got to stick on this one more second. If somebody is doing this for the first time, what would you tell them? Just because obviously you have some you have a lot of intuition because you've done it so much, but yeah, a new guy say came to work for you. What would you tell them? All I tell them is keep it simple. Just go to the people. If well, number one thing is confidence, you've got to learn how to build an ability to have a mindset where it's. I don't want to say you don't care, but you've got to be open to the fact that ninety percent of the people are going to say no, and that's okay. You've got to be willing to walk to the next door with confidence, knowing, yeah, this isn't for everyone. Right. It's okay. Like in that whole ability to handle rejection, we call it rejection. You get into this when you start to have a little success. You're like, oh, they do come. If I stay with, if I stick with this long enough, right? The, it, they come. I'll get two, three, four, five a day. That would be, and keep it simple. Hmm. Be direct. Just tell them exactly what, who you are, what you are, and ask them for their business. In the first, it, unless you can read a person and know they want to have a conversation, most of them don't want to have a conversation. They just want to know what's up. Mm -hmm. And just tell them what's going on and move. And then close, right? Just say, hey, close the deal, which is we'd love to can by to see if you'd be open to giving us an, an opportunity to work hard, earn your trust and serve. And literally in the first 10 seconds, 15 seconds of the door opening, I get from point A to point B and people can either move on with their day or say, Hey, that's a good price. Cause they've already been quoted prices probably three or four times. And they know most people know what pest control costs, right? Yeah. And mine is a price product. I'm in the market as a nice, good price, but I give a value too, because I know what the other companies do and I give all of that and I give a price. My wife bugs me all the time to go up on my price. I'm like, no, that's not what this is about. If I wanted a Ferrari of pest control, I'll develop that brand later to compete with this brand. Maybe if I even wanted that, this is a value product and I'm going to stick to that because I believe that one, it's still profitable. It's a little harder and a little slower to grow it. And it doesn't like the revenues don't shoot through the roof. But if I maintain a good, honest product over time, it'll grow. Real quick, this episode is being brought to you by franchiseandfunding.com. If you've ever had the urge to have your own business and you're considering a franchise, Check out franchiseandfunding.com or perhaps you're stuck in a job situation that's not healthy for you. I think a lot of people can relate to that. Check out franchiseandfunding.com, franchiseandfunding.com. Now let's get back to the show. Absolutely. And that brings me to the logo on your shirt, Smart Value Pest Control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right there, man. You spell, I'm like putting it out there, right? <laughs> yeah. And you know, so many people, they want to get fancy with their logos or they want to get fancy with their, the name of the product. But 
They make the customer think too hard, whereas yours says exactly what it is. You know what it is. Even if you didn't know who Greg Washington was or Smart Value Pest Control was, the minute you see that logo, you know what that means. Yeah. And that was, that was really good branding. I saw Thanks. it. I give some credit to my brother. He took me through a process and said, he asked me tons of questions. If your pest control was an animal, if it was a, if it was a vehicle, and I went through this whole process where mm -hmm. I was like, "What do I want? What do I want this to be?" And the, and that's what it is. It really was about value. I really wanted. I had sold so many contracts where these companies actually provide a great service, but I felt like a, I felt like a, a large. There was a certain part, portion of the marketing that was just hot air, right? I knew that the mom and pop down the street was given the same thing we were, and they could give the same thing. We were just giving them fancy gas control. Yeah. And a lot of these companies do a great job. And they're my competitors, and I don't, like, I have a lot of respect for them because they're an ingenious with their marketing. But that's not what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a little more authentic with my value. Sure. It's, hey, look, I don't need to be fancy in order to impress you. It'll, the product will work. It'll speak for itself and you'll love the price. That's what my whole thing. Love. It. Let me ask you this. What, uh, what's been the biggest challenge you've had starting this business? I would say for me, the marketing in the sales side was the easy side. That's, I've done the, I've done the operation side because when I was working for the oyster company, you know, we were selling at Costco on the East Coast. And if you know anything about Costco, there's a tremendous amount of safety and sanitation. There's my, there's my dog. That's all right. my dog. <laughs> so hold on a second. That's all right. Hey, we keep it real. Anyway, so Costco has a tremendous high. I apologize for that. Oh, no, anyway, not at all. That's life. Yes. We, we were selling oysters frozen on the half shell at Costco on the East Coast. And so I was writing all the pest control programs, the monitoring, keeping up with all these private audits that they had us doing. And that's when I got started on the operations side. The operations part of offering a home service pest control, the right trucks, the right pumps, the right chemicals, the right products that work super good in this area. Um, as much research as I could do, I just had to, in a way, had to do it. I had to go out and do it. I would say for me, transitioning into, I always respected my father, going back to my father, that he have pictures of him pulling oysters off the air belts from the boats into the truck when I was a kid. And I always respected that, hey, there's not a job in this place that my father gives anyone that he has done, literally. Hard work, and too. I really wanted to build it from the ground up because when my technician says, hey, this, this thing's bothering, right? Or I'm having this ache. I can say, yeah, I felt that. And that's one of the things. So the operation side, it was just, there were more challenges because I had, I'd never used the system. That's a good system place and everything worked. That makes sense. That was the challenge. Like I could go out and sell it. I knew I could go out and sell it because I had already done, we had a little team here in the Salt Lake area and I think we did a few hundred thousand in revenue in the summer. And I was like, I, I know I could do that part, but sure. to actually spray them to make sure that these customers are taken care of. All right, let's switch to your customers. If you're yeah. speaking, what is the number one tip you can give to a customer who's considering getting the service pest control? No matter where they are in the United States. Yeah, I would say in pest control, it's really it is really hard to find value. You got to find somebody that's to me hitting right in that center area. Of, they're giving you all the right products, right? Pest control really boils down to what they're spraying, the type of how much they're spraying, and, you know, 
what kind of service they're really willing to give. And so we spray the best products on the market. We spray all the areas that we spray everything around within the bounds of legality, obviously. And then we pride ourselves on servicing. If you have a problem, we'll come within 24 hours to take care of that. We do free resurfaces. We do kind of everything. You know? So how does the Things customer, that, so you help educate the customer on that? How do you, so what do they look for? What should they, what should be their top priority? Yeah. It's just how much area does your company cover? What yeah. are they doing? Watch them, watch them a little bit, see how much product they spray. Mm -hmm. The biggest, one of the biggest complaints that I had with the really fancy pest control was my guy comes here and don't get me wrong. You could spray a house fast because we have the right pumps and we have all the right equipment. It's not about that. Is the guy actually spraying the fence on? Is he spraying your perimeter? Is he, is he actually spraying those areas? Are they coming back in 24 hours? Are they taking care of those growth? Did they get rid of them? All those good methods. questions. Yeah. All good, all good questions. All right. So. What is the vision you have for your business going forward? Where do you see it in a year from now or three years from now? What do you envision? The vision that I have is to, I want to grow this particular branch to be sustained, right? This area. I, I love this old Lehigh area. There's a, I, we live right on the main street here. I just really enjoyed watching this area grow. And I just, I've grown to love Utah. It's a wonderful state. It's a wonderful, I like, I love the conservative values. So what I see is growing this, growing this branch and then, um, just expanding from there, expanding our routes out, increasing our area. It's about, do you yeah. ever see, you ever see yourself getting to the point where you're going to have a, another business hub in Salt Lake? itself or another part of the state or franchising at some point or what do you what's your yeah. vision there the as far as that goes like what kind of format yeah if it works financially right and it, it makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. we'll go for that yeah the franchise option is something that i'd love to see mm -hmm. potentially it obviously has to always be the right partner and things like that but yeah i would love to see it grow I want to get a good hub of business here so I can always focus on this, this kind of really care to my sure. clientele here. And then above and beyond that, I love the local. I love the fact that we yeah. can potentially franchise, use this franchise, but keep it local. Have people from that local market to run that market. Someone that understands the people that understands the ins and outs of the population develop a relationship. All right. Final question. The call to action. This is your, this is close the deal. So we have to have a call to action for the customers. <laughs> What's the call to action? How do people find you? Honestly, we have a wonderful website. It's smartvaluepestcontrol.com. Also is just call my phone 385-335-2266. The reality is We'll take care of you and call us. What's that number again? Slowly. 385 335 All right. Greg, man, I want to thank you for your time. We, I, I want to have you back in about a year. I want to see where you are and the progress you've made because you're clearly going this direction. You're going straight up. I see blue sky for you and growing this business. Thank you for your time, Greg. I appreciate it. Appreciate you, Neil. And that is a wrap with Greg Voisin. I want to thank you again for being part of this journey with us. If you're watching this now on YouTube or you're listening on to one of the players, make sure to comment, like this, hit the bell, all those things, because we're growing this community just like Greg is growing that business in his backyard. It's, gr it's all about the community. And I want to thank you for that. And do me a favor. You know what to do by now if you've been listening to the show. Be intentional and make today a great day. We'll see you soon. Bye.